Greetings, precious lovers of magnificent jewelry. Today I will share with you fascinating stories about the works of the unrivaled Karl Faberge. It is a thankless task to compare masterpieces of jewelry art of the great master, a real wizard of precious stones. After all, each creation by Karl Faberge is a real fairy tale born out of the glitter of jewels. Let you enjoy today some of the rarest specimens that are the crown jewels of jewelry art. I am sure that each of you, dear viewers, will find a sparkling crown to your liking. The Diamond Tiara Cyclamen, Empress Alexandra Fyodorova's tiara with magic sapphires and Maria Fyodorova's golden tiara with diamonds, and diamonds are able to enchant even sophisticated connoisseurs of jewelry art. Probably not all of you know or have seen this magical triple ensemble of tiaras created in the workshop of the famous Faberge. The floral wreath with magnificent sapphires of the color of evening clear sky was brought to life by the skillful hands of masters by the end of the 19th century. From 1895 to the revolution of 1917 this masterpiece belonged to the last Russian Tsarina of the House of Romanov. Unfortunately, there are no images of Alexandra Fyodorova wearing this magnificent diadem. Sapphire flower buds and diamond sprigs with leaves, set in gold and platinum, look majestic and refined at the same time. Diamonds in the form of roses, exquisite chasing and engraving, everything here is perfect, aristocratic and feminine. And as Faberge style requires, there is a lot of space between the leaves and sprigs of shining diamonds, filled with light. They sparkle with precious fire, born from the rays of the sun, it is a striking beauty. The special distribution of elements gives the jewelry delicacy and tenderness, despite the impressive size of the stones. In 1930, the Sapphire Tiara was purchased by collector Armand Hammer, and just a year later by the American Mortimer Leib Schiff. Unfortunately, the rare Faberge works of art from the treasuries of the Russian Tsars went out of the country. The USA thus enriched itself at the expense of Russian jewelry art. A century ago, in 1880, Tsarina Maria Fyodorova, wife of Nicholas II, was gifted with a magnificent gift from her husband, an exquisite diamond and diamond tiara created from gold and silver. Alexander III's choice in favor of Faberge's creation was, of course, a deliberate one. Empress Dagmar admired the art of Karl Faberge and never missed an opportunity to add unique pieces to her luxurious collection. After fleeing abroad due to the revolutionary events in Russia and a fire, some of her jewelry naturally had to be sold. In 1920, the Empress's tiara was acquired by the collector Armand Hammer. For the next 10 years, the tiara was in Denmark in the possession of an unknown owner, and then, in a private collection in one of the countries of Western Europe, about the location of which little was known. In 2019, Maria Fyodorova's fabulous tiara was featured in jewelry exhibitions both in Europe and Russia. According to legend, when the Empress wore this magnificent crown with a large transparent stone at the top of the composition, light fell on the diamond and refracted in the most amazing shades. This visible beam seemed to be a bright trail of light emanating from the top of the tiara, as if it were illuminated by a magic lantern or ignited by the diamond fire of the heavens. Visitors to the exhibition recalled the legend and even tried to see if the glow would appear, and they were delighted, the sunlight really did create that glow. This is indeed the magic of jewelry art made real. Finally, the magnificent cyclamen crown by Karl Faberge represents the highest degree of sophistication and brilliance in the world of tiaras. This sparkling floral arrangement, composed of clear diamonds, is an unrivaled piece from the Westminster jewelry collection. Many consider it a true jewel of beauty among our three tiaras. The delicate twigs, rounded leaf elements and exquisite curls of the cyclamen, set with a diamond band, create a tiara that seems to communicate with us in the supernatural language of living flowers, as if they are frozen in the freezing embrace of winter. The mastery of this exquisite tiara belongs to Albert Holmström, a master from the Faberge Company, who came to Russia from Finland. In 1903, the cyclamen, although not included in the Tsar's jewelry collections, was purchased by a lady named Wilson Fox. Perhaps Mrs. Fox was preparing for a ball, a social event, or simply wished to delight the world with her chic hair accessory. This work of art is now part of the Duke of Westminster's collection. In the image with some fuzziness we see the Duchess of Westminster, Constance Cornwallis West, in 18th century Versailles Palace attire. The aristocrat is preparing for a costume ball at Warwick Castle in 1895, 
and she was one of the recipients of this amazing tiara. Another tiara by Karl Faberge that met the world 115 years ago also stood out. Grand Duchess Anastasia Mikhailovna, mother of Grand Duke Frederick Franz for of mecklenburg schwerin was a passionate collector of Faberge works. She advised her son to order a wedding gift for his future wife, Princess Alexandra of Hanover and Cumberland, from the famous Faberge Atelier in St. Petersburg. Documentation from 1904, preserved between the Grand Ducal Cabinet of mecklenburg schwerin and Eugene Faberge, shows that they agreed on the cost and materials for the tiara, luxurious drop-shaped aquamarines and diamonds. The correspondence also states that Faberge sent personal sketches to the Grand Duchess to gain her son's approval. However, the sketches were lost, and with only two weeks before the wedding, there were no instructions to begin work. Nevertheless, the tiara found its wearer a month after the wedding. A description of Alexandra wearing an aquamarine tiara, and a pink dress with a pearl necklace at a court ball in 1904 confirms her successful acquisition. The tiara includes nine pear-shaped aquamarines, an antique cushion and rose-cut diamonds. The design with forget-me-not flowers tied with ribbon boughs, adorned with arrows representing Cupid, symbolizes affection, devotion and true, everlasting love. This wedding jewelry makes the tiara even more romantic and symbolic. The tiara, created in the style of the time, was made possible by the availability of a new metal, probably a special platinum alloy that allows for thin and strong openwork designs. Experts in the field of jewelry art believe that not many Faberge tiaras were made, and not all of them survived the historical difficulties. The importance of this tiara is enhanced by its pristine appearance, which was preserved in one family collection for over 100 years and finally acquired by a new owner in 2019. The remarkable story of the diamond tiara by Faberge, created for the Dukes of Leuchtenberg, takes us into fragments of history and the brilliance of gemstones that have survived several eras. It all began in 1814 when Emperor Alexander I presented a luxurious set of diamonds, previously owned by Catherine II, to Josephine Buharnais, wife of Napoleon I, during his visit to Paris. After Josephine's death, the diamonds became the inheritance of her son Eugene Buharnais and then his grandson Maximilian, Duke of Leuchtenberg. The Russian branch of this aristocratic family ordered a tiara from the Faberge firm, using diamonds given by Alexander the Great. During the 20th century, the Faberge tiara made an amazing journey, passing through the hands of the royal families of Belgium and Italy. In 2007 this delightful piece of jewelry was acquired by American collectors of Russian art Dorothy and Arthur McFerrin. Each Faberge tiara bears unique historical nuances and symbolism, becoming not only a work of art, but also a testament to time and the intersection of destinies. Each stone, each detail of the tiara, like particles of the past, tells its own amazing story. Which one is closer to you? Share your choice in the comments.